Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to show you 10 JRPGs that no one ever talks about. These games are great, they deserve more attention, but I very rarely or never see anybody talking about them. You know, a very good example will be the Girl Lancer series, especially this one, the fifth game, one of my personal favorites, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you are also tired of seeing me talking about this series. I just wish more people would talk about them. Now please note that this is a compilation, all of these JRPGs are from previous videos that I covered during my YouTube career. So let's begin! Number 10. Ragnarok Odyssey Ace This is an action RPG released on both the PS3 and the PS Vita, and the Ace version is a definitive one, also published by Exit on both systems in North America. It's a quest-driven RPG that was supposed to offer a regular offline story campaign, but also an online one. Never play the online mode, so I can only secure an opinion on the main story. You're a mercenary that will join a guild to hunt down monsters, so every time you'll move around this town with NPCs where the shops and the quest counter is. Six different character classes are available, but you can change to any of them whenever you want. Obviously, it's best to focus on just one. Every quest will take you to a dungeon where you'll need to kill all enemies in the way until you reach a boss. It sounds repetitive, but it keeps it fresh for having great controls, awesome visuals, great battle system and really cool boss battles. I really enjoy this game from time to time and I think it's among the best, published by Exit. Number 9. Bleach the Third Phantom What, you didn't know there was a grid-based strategy RPG based on Bleach for the Nintendo DS? Well, now you do. Why is this game so freaking obscure is because Sega didn't really care much about it. They just published it while focusing more on the fighting games, also on the DS. It's obviously based on the anime and manga, with a story written by the creator of the series himself. You play as either of these two twin brothers that are training to become Soul Reapers. Don't know much about Bleach, so I couldn't understand some things, like several characters from series making appearances. The battle system is awesome here, it's what most strategy RPG lovers want since it's good, balanced and not too convoluted. It plays like most, with a player phase where you control all your characters and then an enemy phase for the enemies. Upon making contact, these 2D badass animations will play out even for the simplest of attacks. I didn't get very far in this game, but I noticed it also has its own triangle system of strengths and weaknesses. Then there are these free time segments where you can watch events with other characters, so there's a lot of reading involved here. Overall, it's a pretty solid RPG and that's coming from a guy who's not a fan of Bleach at all. Number 8. Brave Story – New Traveler Another exclusive is Brave Story but on the PSP, it's a sequel to a book with the same name developed by Game Republic, same people responsible for folklore. You play as Tatsuya, a young boy who wants to save his best friend from a mysterious illness. By doing so, he travels to a fantasy world where he'll get involved in a drama between races. All this in order to get 5 gems for his traveler sword and get back to his world to save his friend. So Brave Story is a very traditional style RPG. You'll meet one character at first, travel to towns, with an overworld in between, meet another party member, and so on. It's a turn-based RPG with a pretty simple mechanic, but with a small touch of originality too. Fans of old-school RPGs will definitely find their nostalgia here, as it plays very similar to most of them. Compelling story, likable characters, nice music, good controls, it's pretty much a great JRPG out there. Number 7. Dual Hearts This is the successor to the Alondra games on the PS1. Technically speaking, it's, well, Alondra 3. 
Its context corresponds to the ideas of the first game, as it relies on puzzle solving. You also go inside people's dreams to find the keys to unlock doors guarding some holy instruments. The protagonists are Rumble and Tumble. You heard that right. This unlikely pair of characters. Rumble needs to find the mysterious dreamstone for personal reasons and Tumble needs to find the instruments. Their goals align, so they journey together across these dreamlands. I gotta say, while the camera and the controls aren't exactly the best out there, it plays fairly well. Puzzles and enemies are easy at the beginning, but they get more enigmatic and fiercer as you advance. I like the boss fights. Some of them can be truly creative, adding a lot to the fun. There's only one town in the game, where you'll meet the several people that are the gateways to the dream areas. It's also the place where you'll get various quests from NPCs. Dual Hearts is a fun game. I believe it wasn't appreciated for being released quite early on the PS2 era, with zero marketing done from Atlus USA. Number 6. Sayuki Journey West This is a grid-based tactical RPG that's heavily inspired by one of the four classic Chinese novels, the same novel that inspired Dragon Ball Z. You will control the monk Sanso, who can be male or female, in a journey from China to India. With the help of the beast god Goku and several other characters, they will travel across several towns and get involved into all sorts of trouble. Battle maps will be small initially with a few characters involved, but as you make progress they will become more intricate and complex. It is recommended to grind whenever you can in this game, since it has some unexpected difficulty spikes. While Sanso can use healing magic and summon spells, the rest of the party can transform into powerful monsters for a short period of time. The penalty though is that there can only be one transformed character at a time. So the game plays around with the elements and the terrain somewhat often. Overcoming them is the key to success. It's a solid game with a light-hearted story, one I recommend to fellow RPG tactical lovers out there. Number 5. Front Mission 3 Another strategy RPG is Front Mission 3, one that belongs to a series that's very obscure outside of Japan. We never got the first two games until the remake of the first one on the Nintendo DS, so this third entry was the first front mission we ever got. The story follows two Japanese mech pilots that find something they weren't supposed to, so now the government is after them. However, this game has two completely different routes. You'll face a decision that'll let you choose which one you'd like to play first. Everything relies heavily on parts, weapons and armor. Knowing which enemy part to attack first is crucial as it can increase or decrease the difficulty of each foe in the battlefield. Positions like height or distance can affect the flow of combat as well. Of course, you can customize your mechs, but it does take a while to understand what's good and what's not. Overall, it's quite an original game that used to be slightly known during its early years. Time went on and many other PS1 classics overshadowed it. Hopefully, this video serves to make people remember or at least become aware of it. Number 4. Shiren the Wanderer Now here is a more serious roguelike RPG, one that I'm also surprised to admit I really like. Just like Chocobo's Dungeon. In terms of difficulty, however, they're aeons apart as Shiren is tough as nails, even on easy mode. So you follow the traveling Shiren, or should I say wandering, into a new adventure. Story-wise, it plays like the E-series, you don't necessarily need to play the others first, but they are all connected. This is the best in the Mystery Dungeon series in my opinion, so no wonder it's one of the most expensive games in this list. Its rarity probably derives from the fact that its positive reviews came in contradiction with its lack of marketing and sales. What I really liked about this game is that you have party members that can fight alongside you. They will be controlled by the AI, but in a very intelligent way for the most part. Or you can switch to them at any time to control them directly, depending on the situation. I strongly advise you do that with the bosses, as they can be utterly unnerving. Shiren the Wanderer is a fantastic game, one of the absolute best roguelike RPGs I've ever played, and definitely a game you should try. Number 5. 
Number 3. The Witch and the Hundred Knight 2 That's right, if you didn't know, the original game had a sequel. Only in name though, as story-wise, they aren't related at all. It's still an action RPG played in a mix between top-down and isometric view. You control once again the Hundred Knight, now summoned, to fight under two different characters this time. Amelie, who's a member of an organization that fights witches, but somehow ends up helping one of them. And of course, the witch Chelka, who possessed the body of Amelie's younger sister. The story is funny, but somewhat compelling, although it's not the reason you'll play this game. It's all about the action, since the controls are better here than before. Once more, your little knight will be able to use a variety of weapons to use as you see fit, depending on the situation. You'll mostly traverse a few long areas until you eventually encounter the boss. So in the end, it's a pretty basic action RPG, but quite fun to play. It may not be as cynical as the first game, but in terms of gameplay, I found it to be better. Here we have Super Robo Tyson, original generation. I can't believe I've only covered this amazing game once. It's strategy RPG on the Game Boy Advance, one with mechs, aliens, and yeah, it's a science fiction universe. It was the very first game of this gigantic franchise to be localized. Originally released in Japan on 2002, but brought overseas until 2006. Basically, they're crossovers of the Super Robot Wars series, but this one was pretty unique. Developer Bam Presto created their own mecha, characters, and a very mature story about political warfare, alien invasion, and adult treachery. But it can get awkwardly funny sometimes. You choose between two main characters at the beginning, each with their own story, route, and maps. As a tactical game, it delivers efficiently as it is fast-paced and with several different characteristics. You don't always need to be near the enemy to engage it, as you can attack from a distance sometimes. Same goes for them, as a matter of fact. It's all about choosing a specific action when they attack you, such as countering with the default weapon or one with the currently available. Or evade or defend. Then you get to watch these awesome animations all the time. But if you want to, you can skip them. The game's not that hard, but still, it can get pretty tough sometimes. Check out this awesome game if you can, even if you're not into mecha. I'm not, for example, but I managed to get into it quite easily. Number 1. Manakimia 2 I decided to include this one here because most people seem to only know the first game, barely anyone knows it got a sequel on the PS2. Yeah, direct sequel, by the way, but with new characters and new plot, although taking place in the same school as before. However, here you'll be able to choose between two protagonists, and each will have their own party, story progression, and different missions, which means it has strong replay value in order to play the game with both. Like most Atelier-like games, Missions will revolve around exploration, gathering, and synthesis. In fact, getting better weapons and accessories, including the skill system, relies on that. But this one has a strong focus on combat and more traditional RPG elements, although you will still be delving a bit into the school simulation. It has an excellent battle system, side by side in 2D, where you can abuse the alchemy skills, do awesome combos, and switch characters mid-battle. And combat music is mind-blowing, I can't believe they pulled out some really key cast metal themes in there. Excellent game, better than its predecessor in my opinion. Alright guys, that's it, those were my picks for today's video, I really hope more people can talk about these games or start talking about them, because most of them really need the attention, especially the Grow Lancer series, damn it! Anyway, that's all, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!